Hey guys, welcome to Periodic Surf Co or DIY Surfboard Kits if you're on the interweb. Uh, this is our first video which is going to be showing you how to assemble one of our wooden hollow core surfboard frame kits. So we have six kits on offer at this stage which includes two SUPs which is an 8.5 wave SUP and a 9 foot 6 uh, kind of all rounder but still good for the waves if it's only small stuff as well as a 9 foot 2 longboard, a 8 foot mini mail, a 6.4 egg-shaped uh, old school board as well as a original 5 foot 11 fish. Now today I will be assembling the 8 foot 5 SUP as that has probably the most amount of components in it uh, and that way I can showcase basically what you need to do across the range of our boards. Now later on throughout the month I will be doing complete builds of every single board we uh, sell here so do keep an eye out but for those that just want to get stuck into it right now this is how you do it. Now, as far as components go with a kit, uh, terminology throughout this is going to be spines. So all of our boards come with spines. Now we have a C and an S side. So C is the center. So that's the central spine, which goes up like a stringer would. And then S is for the sides and that goes either side of that center spine. Now the ribs are what go between the spines. This is what gives your board the shape and also gives you the kind of concave and all of the fun stuff that makes your board behave like a dream on the water. Additionally to the, the ribs and the spines, you've got rails. You can tell the rails apart because these are solid. Now all of our boards either have a 25 or 30 millimeter thick rail. That means that you laminate a 25 or 30 millimeter thick rail onto your board once it's skinned, then you would obviously shape those rails accordingly. Now the last thing is your support material. Because we post these things all over the world, we have a maximum length of 105 centimeters, which means that our spines, especially on a board like this one, has to get broken up into three or, you know, two or three sections. And the support material just goes on either side of the joins and uh, make sure that that doesn't come apart when it's laminated inside of your board. Now, as far as glue goes, we recommend a polyurethane, which is a, a foaming glue for one, but it also cures with water and uh, it's, it's just super strong. But this stuff is impossible to get off, so make sure you have a good pair of gloves. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is glue together your spines and your rails so that they have plenty of time to dry and uh, we don't get snookered while we're waiting for it on the next step. Not that I really need to explain this because it's very self-explanatory, but C1 and C1, they get stuck together like a giant jigsaw piece because that's exactly what it is. Then with your support material, one piece goes on either side with plenty of glue and you just clamp that together and let that dry. So polyurethane does go a pretty long way. So you'll see that I'm not covering the whole thing here with polyurethane, I'm just giving it a good coverage. Same thing with our spine. Because these are so tight, the glue coverage only needs to be thin. Now the good thing about uh, these kits is you really don't need expensive clamps. Here you can see that I'm just using the cheapest spring clamps you can find and that is plenty. So that there is joint one. We do the same with C2 and keep moving forward. Okay, so rails are basically the same as the spine except these don't get reinforced either side because we need them flush for our lamination. So instead we'll glue them and tape them securely across the joint to make sure they can't move and lay them on a flat surface until it dries. All right, so that is everything glued up and we've had plenty of time to dry. So I actually left this overnight and now we can move on. Now to assemble your frame kit, it's all a matter of matching numbers on your ribs to the numbers that are imprinted on the spines. So the way we start is one is at the tail and then we work our way up. So if you got 10 ribs, there'd be 10 slots. If you got 12 ribs, there's 12 slots, etc., etc. And basically with just a little bit of glue, we slot it all together. So my method here is that we start at the tail and we work our way forward. Occasionally, depending on how floppy everything is uh, in the early stages, I will insert a rib around the middle of the way up just to help with the spines um, moving around too much. But 
This time we'll see how it goes, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. So we just start with a bit of glue on either side of the ribs and then try and work some into the actual slots as well. And then it's just a matter of slotting it together. Now everything is pretty much a slip fit on here, but as you are moving around, um, you will want to just come back and check that everything is indexed. So everything should be flush. It's the way it's designed. Nothing should be proud. So if it's not flush, just come back and give it a little bit more to press that down and index it properly. You can see here that the frame is quite sloppy up the end. If I needed to, I can come back with a rib, which is around here, so number six, and insert that. Uh, but I think we should be right right now. Once everything is glued in, we just have to come across, make sure that everything is seated. And uh, if it's not, just add a clamp on any problem areas. So you can see here, I've just clamped between the actual cutouts and that just gives a little bit of pressure onto the ribs. That looks really good. Now, because this is polyurethane, water helps it cure fast, but this also makes it foam up a little bit more. So you don't need to use water, but because we want to speed this up just a little bit, I'm going to spray each one of these joints with a little bit of water. Okay, so I set that aside for probably an hour, just enough time for this glue to set but not be fully cured. So basically, as long as things can't pop out. I'm just going to apply glue, try to get a little bit in the slot. Basically, I just start in the center and work my way out. Now, friction should do most of the holding, um, but we still can clamp with some spring clamps on you know, every second or third rib just to make sure that things don't spring out. Now, one thing to note on the end one, so in particular, the rib number one, uh, so the tail rib and the rib that's up at the nose, these won't necessarily have a nice tight bond on both sides because of the angle. Laser cutting doesn't really have any way of getting a bevel cut. It's only a 90 degree cut. Uh, this won't matter with the strength at all. We still laminate on a 25 millimeter strip here. So as long as it's indexed nicely, and one of the corners is nice and tight, uh, that is plenty good enough. The rest of the ribs should be pretty damn tight though. Now, if you're using a kit like the shortboard where you can't really get these uh, spring clamps into these positions, the other option is you get a, a, a rubber band, just thread it through the rib behind it like so, and then you can wrap it around back and through a couple of times. And that there would be enough clamping pressure to hold that in. Now, friction is really doing most of the work here, but a little bit of clamping pressure is sometimes required just to get that, that curve to conform. All right then, there is a completed frame kit. So as you can see, it is super easy to put these together. I'm really happy with the way that we've actually developed this to be almost foolproof. Everything is labeled clearly, and you really don't need all that many tools to build your own wooden surfboard, which is just amazing. From here, the next step would be preparing your skins, so your top and bottom skins, so you can glue them on, as well as your fin support. Now, if you're interested in building your own hollow coil wooden surfboard, well, you've certainly found the right place. So on this YouTube channel, we are gonna be offering a lot of tuition and kind of just bringing you through the steps of how we do it in here and showcasing some of our students' works along the way as well. Uh, but also through our website, which is DIY Surfboard kits.com.au uh, you can buy frame kits complete kits for a variety of wooden surfboards so so basically wherever you are you can start building your own board uh, the little disclaimer there is it is only the the uh, plywood frame kits that we ship worldwide not the complete kits anyway guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video